seven years old. Third row pew, John 3, 16. Something changed in me. Red letters coming off the page. Flooded my heart with amazing grace. I knew that I believed. Oh, those roots run deep. Oh, I've been through some faith shaking hard times. Yeah. But not morning to be together in the family of God. A couple things. Um, <clears throat> I think just one thing, actually. Um, other than just continuing to pray for our missions team, uh, July 3rd is our annual policeman's lunch. So, yeah, you can clap. Go ahead. It's fun. So if you're not familiar uh, with the annual policeman's lunch, you can sit down for a second, and then I'll make you stand up again in a second. <laughs> Uh, if you're not familiar with our annual play, <laughs> just going to stay standing. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> if you're not familiar with our annual policeman's lunch, well, basically we go and we just flee, uh, we, if we flee, we feed <laughs> the police officers for Highland because it's a super busy weekend for them. Uh, they're working doubles and there's a lot of them and everybody's on all the time. And it's very, it can be a dangerous weekend. So we go in and we pray with them and uh, we feed them and it's just, uh, it's just a really good way to, to, represent Christ and represent this church to our, our police officers. So if you can, if you can donate or if you can help, uh, you know, just go to the Welcome Center. Pretty much everything we're doing, you know, you go to the Welcome Center because that's centrally located. All right. Well, enough of me yammering. You guys want to go to the Lord and worship this morning? All right. Let's stand up. Let me pray for us and we can start singing. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for our time together that we can, uh, we can just come together as a family, Lord, to worship you, to praise you, Lord, and, and to just focus on you. Um, Lord, we ask uh, that your spirit would be with us, Lord, that your word this morning would be powerful, um, that, uh, Lord, that we can just hear the things, Lord, that you want us to hear uh, to better uh, serve you. 
So, Lord, we just love you so much. We want to give you all the praise and the glory. And all God's people said, amen.
as the ushers will uh, work their way forward. Um, Heavenly Father, we just, we want to thank you, Lord, that we can come together and just sing praises and worship you. Uh, Lord, we ask as we as we take the offering now that, that it would be blessed, Lord, and that you would use this to continue to reach people in our community and, and to support uh, organizations like Trans World Radio that we heard from this morning, Lord, uh, that these gifts and, and these offerings, Lord, would, would just continue to do your work around the world and locally. Um, Lord, we just ask all these things and we pray in your name. Amen. That you are, you have provided and been the solid rock, Lord. That we can, we can trust in you. We can have as our foundation, Lord. It's so amazing, Lord. We love you. We ask your blessing on your word this morning, I'm Pastor Adam. Lord, we just want to express our gratefulness to you. We love you so much. In your name, we pray. Amen. Good morning, Mission Bible Church. As always, my hope is that we've had a great day of worship so far because that's what we're supposed to be about, isn't it, as a church? We're supposed to be about worshiping and honoring and bringing glory to our great God and King. And so I hope that we have done that so far. I believe we have in our time uh, during the ABF when we heard from our, our missionaries and during our time of worship. And I hope that this is a continuation of worship right now. All right, so this morning is both a happy and a sad time for me. 
I'm sure that it's sad for, for many of you, though it may be a happy occasion for others. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sad because today marks, as many of you know, the end of my time of service here as your pastor at Mission Bible Church. Um, I'm also sad because um, your prank game is pretty weak because no one tried anything this morning. I haven't been pelted with water balloons. There's no Nerf guns anywhere. What's going on here? Check for spiders. I don't see any spiders. There's nothing. There was a spider that was crawling down uh, one of the doors this morning. Did someone plant that there? I'm not sure. But if that's it, whew, you need to up your game for your next pastor. Right? So I'm sad because of that. But at the same time, I'm happy. It's a happy occasion um, because today it doesn't mark my end of time of service in God's kingdom. I have been called to a different ministry, yes, but I'm still going to be ministering in God's kingdom. And I can be okay with that, even in the sadness of leaving uh, my church family here, because this is all about God's mission, his purpose. And you know what? I think it can be a happy time uh, for you all this morning as well, because the same is true of Mission Bible Church. Mission work can continue even while you are beginning that discernment process of God's plans uh, for this church going forward. And so, since this is my last Sunday with you as, as your pastor, um, I would like to spend our time this morning doing just that, looking at the idea of mission or purpose. God has a mission for this church. He has purposes, eternal kingdom purposes that he wants to accomplish through all of you. And because my time uh, of being a part of that specific mission has come to a close, I'd, I'd like to take one last opportunity to speak to you about God's purpose for Mission Bible Church, at least in the broad brush, wide view idea. Because here's the thing. You have to know your mission if you're going to stay on target. You have to keep your purpose right there in front of you, dead center, in your field of vision, if you want to achieve God's purposes. And since your purpose, and really every Christian's purpose, is to serve God's purposes, to be on his mission, this is even more important. All of us, all of us, we need to stay on target. So, no surprise, I'm a, I'm a big nerd, right? I love Star Wars, at least up until the point that Disney bought the franchise and ruined it, but I digress. Anyway, anyway, the title of this sermon actually comes from a Star Wars reference, from the original and arguably the best movie, episode four, or episode six, A New Hope, right? The climax of that movie has the Rebel Alliance, the good guys, attacking a vastly more powerful galactic empire, the bad guys. Right, and so in this climactic scene, there's this huge battle in space, space or ships flying all over the place, big explosions, cannons firing. And if the bad guys win, the main rebel base, the foundation of the resistance against the evil empire will be destroyed by the empire's new super weapon, the Death Star. Okay, maybe a little bit too much backstory. Anyway. At one point during this battle, there's this scene where a squadron of Y-wing fighters makes an attack run on the Death Star. And if they can fire a proton torpedo, not a photon tor torpedo, that's a different franchise that has lived long and prospered, but we're not talking about them. If they can fire a proton torpedo into a two-meter wide exhaust port, roughly the size of a Tatooine Womp Rat, right? Then the Death Star will be destroyed and the good guys are going to win. Well, they're doing this attack run, and during this time, the squadron leader, gold leader, starts to target the exhaust port. And he's, you know, about 50,000 meters away from it or so, and he notices as he's targeting, making his targeting run, that the big cannons aren't firing around him anymore. And in response, he starts to panic, and he starts paying more attention about what's going on around him. He's paying more attention to that than he is the exhaust port. And as he's doing this and he's talking to his squadron, two times one of his squadron members, Gold Five, cautions him, stay on target, stay on target. But it doesn't work and he loses focus. He starts to panic. And before he can get the shot off, he and his entire squadron are destroyed by the big baddie, Darth Vader. It's a cool story, right? I think so. 
But what's the point? Well, other than giving you a glimpse into one of the greatest movies of the 20th century, the point is this. Gold leader lost focus on his mission. Right? And there's some debate on the online communities on whether or not he would have succeeded in, in destroying the target in the, first point, in the first place. But the point is that he never got the shot off to begin with. He took his focus off of the target. And yes, there was a lot of stuff going, around, uh, going on around him, including a dark lord of the Sith that was going to destroy him. But all of these things, though important, they were secondary to his main purpose, his main goal, his mission. Destroy the giant moon-sized ship that's going to blow up a planet. He lost focus. He forgot. Mission is important. Mission is critical. Mission informs what you're doing. It informs why you're doing it and why you aren't doing something else instead of that. I know I hate it when I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Especially when I find out later that what I was doing was actually a waste of time. It wasn't important. And it's almost always the case that when you don't know your mission, when you don't know your purpose of what you're doing, then what you're going to end up doing is just wasting a lot of time doing stuff that's not that important. Stuff that actually gets in the way of mission. And that's why in relationship with God, in the church, we have to stay focused on the mission if we want to have any chance of staying true to God's purposes. So why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, this morning, as we are looking into your word, as we're looking into the purpose, the mission that you have for Mission Bible Church here in Highland, Indiana, God, my hope and prayer is that, as always, that you would be with us, God, that we would be able to discern clearly your will, your guidance, what your word says, how it applies in our lives, how it applies in this fellowship together, how it applies in this community. So God, help us, give us extra clear revelation, discernment, wisdom, insight into your leading and into your guidance for this church going forward. And God, I pray for each one of my brothers and sisters in Christ here this morning that they would take this to heart. God, that they would see your mission clearly. And then God, that they would make the changes if necessary, that they would move to align themselves with following where you're leading. All these things we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So what is this mission that I'm talking about? Well, today as I, again, end my season of ministry here with you all, I'd like to wrap up by, again, reminding us all of what the mission of this church is, what the mission of Mission Bible Church is, what all of the elders and the pastors spent many hours in prayer and discussion and seeking wisdom and discernment uh, from God on where this church should be focused in our goal of serving God together. I'm not introducing anything to you, new to you because this mission has been the mission of the church for a while now and if you pay any attention, it's actually in big letters on the wall as you, as you go out the main exit right there. But anyway, by way of reminder, the mission of Mission Bible Church is this. Love God, love people, make disciples. Love God, love people, make disciples. Sounds simple, right? Well, this simple sounding mission statement, when you stop and take a look at it, when you dig a little bit deeper, is really as deep and as far reaching as you want it to be. Because this mission comes from two key passages of scripture that really form the foundation of Christian living in general. These two passages are the summation of God-given purpose for every Christian, every church, every ministry that they should try to live by. The great commandment and the great commission. First, the great commandment, Matthew twenty two thirty seven 37 through 40. He, being Jesus, said to him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. And then Jesus said this as well, what we call the great commission in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus came near and said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So these two 
foundational passages which are summarized in, in Mission Bible Church's mission statement. They inform the preaching, the teaching, the small groups, the youth, the outreach, all ministry, everything in between that's going on in this church. And that's precisely because they are so foundational. So let's look at what each one of these means in a little bit more detail. First, the great commandment. Right? This is the teaching of Jesus. This is the response that he gave when he was asked what the greatest command of the law was. The great commandment is based on two passages of Old Testament scripture found in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. Listen, Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These words that I am giving you today are to be in your heart. And then Leviticus 19.18. Do not take revenge or bear grudge against members of your community, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. All right, so this great commandment, this is what Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, the Word became flesh, the second person of our triune God. This is what he says is the distillation of the entirety of Old Testament law. I don't know about you, but I don't know that we give this enough attention. This is a big deal. Basically, what Jesus is saying here is that, hey, if you wanna get it right, If you want to know the purpose of all that law, that all of that was meant to teach you about relationship with God, relationship to each other in this world, it's this. Love God with wholehearted devotion, with everything that you are, and love each other in real, tangible, servant-minded ways as you love and you care for your very self. This is powerful. This is huge. There are so many directions that you can go with this. You can look at what loving God looks like, how love is equated with devoted service and obedience, how how loving and serving him takes precedence over all other things. You can look at how Jesus defined neighbor love as being literally anyone, anywhere. How loving others is demonstrated through actions informed by care and concern. The list could go on and on, and that's the point. This is a big mission. This is huge. This is larger than anything we could ever think of. This mission is so big, so encompassing that you're never going to get to the point where you can stop and say, it's over, mission accomplished. It's a mission that will last as long as this church exists. It's a mission that will last as long as this world exists. It's a mission that will carry on into eternity. But that doesn't mean it's hopeless. It doesn't mean that you should just give up. Because it's not about accomplishing the mission. It's about living on mission. Keeping that target in mind. Moving closer and closer to it. Doing things big and small that move you closer and closer to that target. Because even though it's big and huge and far-reaching, at the same time, this church's mission is very here and now focused. One with eternal but real world and measurable significance. Because, again, that third part of the mission statement, make disciples. This is about loving people in the most important way that you possibly can. Through helping to bring them into the kingdom. Jesus said to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations, of everyone, Jews and Gentiles alike, and to baptize them and to bring them into the mission and to teach them to obey all of his commands. In other words, he told these disciples here to go out and to bring people into the same loving relationship with the Father that they enjoyed. And this command is the final words that we have from Jesus in Matthew's gospel. This is what Matthew chose to end on, what he felt was most important of Jesus' closing teachings after his resurrection, but before he returned to the Father. Do you notice here, this final charge, these summary words, they aren't about doing miracles. They're not about looking for big things. They're not about looking for signs 
It's not about what heaven or eternity is going to be like. It's not about setting up the apostles as the rulers of the church age. It's about mission, purpose, here in this world. Jesus wanted to make sure that they understood their mission because it was still going to go on even after he left them to return to the Father. And the church has always understood that this great commission is for all believers at all times. This wasn't just about the apostles. No, Jesus is giving us, his followers here today, he is giving us this same purpose as well. Because that great commission, it fits into both of the tenets of the great commandment. We love God through obeying his commands, following his teachings, and Christ's example. And the best way that we can do that and love our neighbors at the same time is through doing this, telling them about the good news of salvation, the goodest news the world has ever heard, the news that God loves them. He has made a way for them to be reconciled in relationship with him through giving his very son to die in their place for their, for our sinful rebellion. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Loving God and loving people is accomplished in no small part through making disciples. And that truth is reflected in our slogan, on mission for Christ to make disciples of the world. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight to what we've been focusing on here at this church over these past four years and why we're focusing on them. Because this understanding of mission inspired a vision for the church as well, meant to be a description of what we want to look like as we seek to be true to the mission that God has given us, the purpose that he has for this church. Because we are on mission for Christ, because we want to love God, love people, and make disciples, the leadership here believes that God wants our fellowship to look a specific way based on our context, our community, who we are and who we're serving. So the vision that we, that we have for this church, the church's vision statement is this, to be a church that is faithful to the mission of preaching the gospel and making disciples, both around the world and in our neighborhood. So like the mission, this vision, it fleshes out what we do in ministry, what ministries we focus on in the first place, how we evaluate success and failure in ministry, teaching, preaching, caring, outreach, training, it's all supposed to be about better equipping us, better equipping everyone to preach the gospel and make disciples. Both throughout the world, yes, as we support national and international missions, like the, again, the missionary family that we have here this morning that told us about Transworld Radio during our Sunday school hour. But also, sharing the gospel and making disciples in our own neighborhood, in our communities in our schools, where we work, with the people who serve our community, in our families, up and down our blocks. Leadership of this church truly desires that each and every one of us is faithful to the call to love God, love people, and make disciples. And so our focus here has been on teaching and equipping and serving so as to make this a reality. To the best of our abilities, and I will freely admit that at least I'm not perfect, and that, yes, some mistakes have been made. But we've tried to do this because that's one of the purposes of of elder leadership in the church, equipping the saints for ministry. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, to build up the body of Christ, until we all reach the unity in faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity, 
with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. You know what? I believe that God has honored this and I believe that he has moved in many ways mightily in this church over these past four years. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight. One of the tasks that the elders assigned me after announcing uh, my resignation was that they wanted me to assess from my perspective where the church is at right now. And one of the things that I did in doing this and thinking about this and trying to do this assessment was to sit down and to try to make a list of how the ministries of this church have been impacted over these past four years. The changes, improvements, maybe even the difficulties. So I'd like to share this list with you now because it helps to highlight the point that I'm making here. And before I get started, I want you to know that the point that I'm not making here is about how awesome I am or how awesome the, all the elders and deacons are in starting all of these ministries. Because we aren't, and we didn't. I want to highlight how God has been work, at work at his church here in Highland, Indiana, over these past four years. So, here you go, in no particular order. First one that came to mind was the name change. Whether you like it or not, we changed our name to Mission Bible Church. In part, this was to help us to remember that we are, on fa in fact, on mission together as a church. We established a local outreach team with the specific purpose of reaching our community with the gospel, primarily through identifying opportunities and then encouraging all of us together to get involved. And many of the changes that we're talking about here are a direct result of this team as well as the next item, which is this, updated mission, vision, and values. We updated our mission and vision and values in light of our renewed understanding of our purpose as a church. And this update, again, reflects our desire to be on mission for Christ to make disciples of the world. A technical one that many probably don't really care about, we updated our constitution we made several updates to our church constitution and bylaws in order to better serve our current ministry needs. We changed how we do membership and the elders and deacons and their service commitments and how we run official meetings. We increased our online presence, mostly prompted by COVID. We increased and greatly improved our online and digital presence, including Facebook streaming, which we're not doing right now due to technical difficulties, <laughs> and a YouTube presence and social media engagement, physical improvements. We made numerous changes and improvements to our physical building, including updating the foyer and our interior signage and redesigning the stage, including this awesome pulpit build. So whoever did that, that was great. Installing an outdoor digital sign to help inform our community about what's going on. We established a weekly prayer time on Sunday mornings before our adult Bible fellowships where we praise God for how we see him working as well as lift up requests for our congregation and our community and the world. We changed a little bit how we do children's ministry. The church developed and implemented a team leadership model for the children's ministry with a group of elders and teachers and church members now providing direction for the day-to-day -day operational oversight for the ministry. In order to better reach the community, the church started a ministry called Toddler Time where once a week we open up the gym during the fall and winter and spring months for parents to just bring their children to play. And so we throw out a bunch of toys. And we say, go at it, go have fun. And I, I won't say that, uh, that I was involved in that sometimes, throwing kids into bouncy houses, but that's neither here nor there. And then during the summer, this group comes together and meets in parks all around the community. And we have volunteers from this church who just come, not because they have kids here, but come so they can speak to and encourage the families that bring their kids. And along with that came this desire to be seen as a resource for the community. And this led to increased usage of our facilities for people in the community. The gym, the kitchens, the meeting spaces. So we have things like a neighborhood basketball time and we have homeschool groups that meet here and we have banquets and awards all the time for the schools here. Girls on the Run does their prep work here sometimes. We have open volleyball, just to name a few. And all of this has led 
to a desire for increased community presence overall. We want to be able to have opportunities to share the gospel in the community. Things like being a part of the Highland Trunk or Treat or the annual 4th of July parade, as well as participation in the ministry, as Chewy highlighted, of, of feeding the Highland Police Department before that. And let me tell you, I have had few greater joys in life than driving my truck at five miles an hour up Kennedy with parents screaming and cheering me as I pelt their kids with candy. It ranks right up there with my wedding day and the birth of my children. <laughs> Not quite, but close. Fellowship time. In our church, we have looked for ways to fellowship with each other, including on Sundays, things like the cookie and the coffee ministry and the mission mug club, but also on times outside of Sunday services with things like the Super Bowl party and family game nights and summer bike rides and kids' movie nights. I think we've become a closer-knit family because of these things. To go along with that idea of doing life together, we also establish a, a small group ministry. These ministry, the Go Groups, is directed at both fellowship and discipleship. Growth and understanding, yes, and living out the teachings of Scripture. We've increased our focus on visitation. We've tried to include those who may not be able to fellowship with us in person. The elders, especially during that pandemic time, they focused on visitation, both digitally making phone calls and in person. And the elders now share in the responsibility of, of visiting with and bringing meals and serving communion uh, with many of the older and less mobile in the congregation. In-house, we've, we've made many improvements that focused on the sound and the tech ministries. Again, over the past four years, we've relocated the sound booth. We purchased and integrated new cameras a new soundboard, new computers, new lighting software, a new video screen, all to improve our time of corporate worship. We try to enter into the digital revolution, making strides to improve communication. Bulletins and weekly updates now come through Flocknote. We have online giving, event registration and sign-up, improved information slides, just to name a few. We also developed and launched a new website, complete with a new logo and calendar access and information about our church and ministries and all of these kinds of things. Also in-house, we, we assessed and we made some changes to our adult Bible fellowships and our Sunday school. This included trying to bridge the gaps between generations, both through using the same curriculum for all ages, and also more recently through integrating and rotating classes so that the youth and the adults and the suburbanites, they all meet together at least for two months out of every three months. And then finally, there have been many changes and improvements to the youth ministry. They've combined the age groups together. They've changed their meeting times. They relocated and redesigned and put together a new youth room and a new logo, and they decorated, and they have a new focus. I mean, they're on a mission trip right now. Right? And these are just the ministries that I could think of. And I know there have been more. And if I missed one, this near, to, near and dear to your heart, please accept my apologies. It's not that I did so intentionally. All ministry is important. But friends, no, this isn't about bragging about how awesome I am. We're boasting about the faithfulness and the goodness of God. It's not about saying how awesome the elders are because many of these changes weren't even initiated by us. This is about God faithfully working in this fellowship. It's about how he has blessed this congregation immensely over these past four years. And it's especially noticeable when you remember how many of these changes took place during that whole pandemic, right? When the world tried to shut down completely. God showed us that he is greater than a pandemic. He wasn't going to be shut down. And he continued to work through us as we faithfully sought to serve and to follow him as his church. And so that's actually where I want to end uh, my time here this morning with you all, as we begin to wrap up this morning. Again, my time of ministering with you all has drawn to a close. And in these closing moments, I'd like to offer you three encouragements as you now enter in, into a time of transition. Because there are going to be questions. There's going to be some confusion. 
Things may be passed over unintentionally. And of course, there's going to be uh, maybe some stress and anxiety about God's plan and who he may be bringing to serve this church going forward. But in all of this, this doesn't mean that God is at a standstill, that ministry is at a standstill. It doesn't mean that God is going to be silent and not offer guidance and support in the coming weeks and months and years. And so as this time of transition for you all has now begun, let me encourage you with three things. First, this is God's church, not the pastor's. This has not been my church over these past four years, and I'm not handing off the reins to someone else. My role here has been an under-shepherd. I, just as much, in each, as much as each and every one of you, my primary role and responsibility has been to seek and discern and submit to the will and the leading and the purposes of God. I think of myself in a pastoral role as a lead follower. I am tasked with the purpose of saying, hey, this is where the Lord is leading us, so now follow me as I follow Christ. So remember, this church already has a leader. It's not me. It's not the next pastor. It's Christ. Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. He exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as a head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Mission Bible Church is God's church, not the pastor's. Second, because this is his church, he directs it where he wants it to go. You know the mission. You know the mission that he has for you, to love God, love people, and make disciples. Mission isn't determined by the pastor. It's determined by the head of the church, and that's Christ. The pastors, the elders, the ministry leaders, the deacons, our job is not to determine direction, but to discern God's leading. So don't think that this time of transition means that you're off the hook. Don't think that it means that you're leaderless or rudderless. God is still in control. He is still in charge. This is his church. And he has given you two other great pastors, a team of dedicated and godly men serving as elders and deacons, men that God put into place just for this time. Because this transition didn't catch God off guard. He knew about it before any of us did. He already accounted for it in his plans, in his guidance. His mission for this church remains unchanged. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. You would not receive mercy, but now... You have received mercy. Finally, because this is Christ's church and because he has a mission for all of you, you already know it. My last encouragement for you all is this. Don't wait. Go. Don't wait to serve until God has brought your next pastor. Don't put off ministry and outreach because you want to see if the next guy is going to support it. You all are on mission for Christ right now to make disciples of the world. So go and do it. Get involved in ministry. Take the gospel to the community. Love and serve each other. Support, encourage, and follow the elders and pastors and deacons and ministry leaders right now as they faithfully seek to discern and follow God's leading. Living on mission doesn't have to wait until God puts your next pastor into place because it's not the pastor's mission. It's God's. So don't wait. Equip and go. Serve now. Let your next pastor start serving a fellowship that is wholly committed to serving the mission that God has for you. 
Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ, to which you were all called in one body, rule your hearts. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I don't know how to end any better than that, so I won't even try. So please know that I have been greatly blessed these past four years, ministering and serving with you all. Though there have been times of heartache, there have been times of great difficulty and stress, there have also been times of love and encouragement and support from all of you, especially the staff that I was blessed to serve with. Know that I love you all. I will continue to pray for Mission Bible Church. I'll pray that God will continue to guide and bless and use this fellowship for his kingdom. Because like all of you, the reason why I'm wearing this hoodie this morning is because this is my mission forever. Love God, love people, make disciples. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning as we have been reminded of your purpose for this church. God, again, I, I thank you that in your word is, is mission and purpose overwhelming, enough to guide each and every step from the moment of birth until the moment of death. You've given us mission that has eternal significance things that will outlast the lives of everyone here combined. That God, you have blessed us even with the opportunity to serve in your kingdom. You don't need us. You don't need our hands and our feet. You don't need our skills. You are God. But this isn't about you. It's about us, about you blessing and loving us by giving us that purpose. So thank you, God, for that. Help all of us, especially in this world in which we leave, live, the world that in many ways seems bent on going the exact opposite of your will. God, help us to be beacons of, of light, to be salt and light in this world, shining like stars in the heavens, pointing people not to ourselves, but to you and your love. Thank you, God for the blessing that you've given me and my family in serving this church over the past four years. I pray, God, that you will continue to bless this church, and I pray, God, even right now, that you will bless the pastor that you are preparing to come and serve here. You are a good God, and we are thankful for all that you are and all that you do. And it's in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. stand with us as we close and worship this morning.
Thank you so much for what you've done here. Um, you've had a major, major impact and blessing on the ministry here at, at Mission Bible Church. You guys, uh, let me pray as we send them off to their next ministry. Heavenly Father, we just ask, Lord, that your spirit would continue to be upon them and their family. As they follow you into the next ministry, Lord, the thing that you have and the great work you have for them to do in Washington. Lord, we just ask that your spirit would be upon them in a mighty way. Lord, we know that they've followed you in their time here and they're continuing to follow you. And it's so exciting, Lord, when you start to move your chess pieces around, you're getting ready to do great things. And so, Lord, we just uh, we want to ask a special blessing on them today. We want to pray over them that you would be just mightily active in their next mission as they have been here. Lord, we thank you for them, for the blessing they've been to this church body. Lord, we love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Guys, I'd like to just send you off with this, bless with this blessing. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, brothers. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And we know the Lord's going to do great things. So Pastor Adam and Sarah will be out there. Make sure that you give him hugs because he loves that personal close interaction. So lots of hugs, him and Sarah and uh, Jason and Tyler's up there too. So thank you very much, you guys. Church family, awesome day today. Go in peace. We love you.